all of our winners. Now, let's head back over to the competition fields and see who's getting set up for their first semifinals match. Stephanie, take it away on the Northrop Grumman Field. All right, thank you, Tyler. Here on the Northrop Grumman Foundation Field, we have representing the ninth ranked up division. That's 2011A, asymmetrical out of Broadview Heights, Ohio. Their alliance partners are A78X, that's XO Bites out of Montclair, Virginia. Spirit Division, make some noise for the Red Alliance. And representing the Arts Division, we have 3814B, that's High Botics out of Erlinger, Kentucky. Their alliance partners are the big, the bad, it's 254F, the cheesy boost out of San Jose, California. All right, this is why we do the math. Let's get things started in three, two, one, go! Off to the races yet again. Blue Alliance manages to snag control of two of the neutral mobile goals. With five seconds left in the match, looks like our teams are almost getting ready to go into the driver. That's gonna go to the Blue Alliance. Moving on to driver controlled in three, two, one, go! All right, we are ready to rock and roll. Now in driver controlled, we have the Blue Alliance with control of two of the neutral mobile goals. Red manages to grab one and bring it to their side. That's 2011A from the Red Alliance. They grab one of the neutral mobile goals, but it falls out of their claws. It is stuck on that blue platform. They're gonna have to capture that back if they hope to get a score for it. One minute, 15 seconds left in this match. We have a lot of defense happening. 254F from the Blue Alliance playing some heavy, heavy defense against 2011A from the Red Alliance. They have them pushed all the way into the corner keeping them from obtaining that neutral mobile goal. Oh my goodness, 55 seconds left in this match. On the other side of the field, we have 8078X from the Red Alliance collecting ring after ring. They have them in their mobile goal in the red color at the 40 second mark. High Botics from the Blue Alliance trying to evade 8078X from the Red Alliance trying to keep control of that neutral mobile goal. 30 seconds, our Blue Alliance is back on their side of the field, but one of the Blue mobile goals is wedged underneath the platform. What will they do? Approaching 15 seconds, our Red Alliance heads back to their side of the field. 2011A pushes that platform down while the Blue Alliance manages to have cleared that Blue mobile goal from underneath the platform. They slam it on top of that Blue platform. And the Blue Alliance with one mobile goal elevated. Oh my gosh. Grant, take it away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's definitely some speech, just speech, speechless moments here uh, in the World Championship Finals. I'm here with Noeen, who's one of our head reps uh, throughout both middle school and high school. Um, Noeen, are you speechless? That was crazy. It <laughs> just happened towards the end. <laughs> but. Yeah. No, that match was crazy to me. I mean, you saw the Blue Alliance. where They got a, a mobile goal stuck under the platform, but they were able to get it back out. Were you seeing that type of thing happen in your divisions? Or, you know, how does that usually go in matches? Honestly, Grant, I was doing middle school all of the last uh, few days, and high school just brought it up another level. It was just crazy. It was just crazy. And uh, our division had a lot of one-point winners up and down, lost, but nothing as crazy as that. Yeah, no, for sure. I... I... <laughs> one point decisions, nothing as crazy as that. This match, it, it did get a little scuffly though. I mean, you notice uh, all day we've been talking about the one, the one, re uh, run, one robot balance versus two robot balance. This match ended with a lot of robots not on platforms. Do you think that was intentional or do you think that was kind of, you know, on the fly changes? Yeah, this is Vex World. Teams are here for strategy and strategy only. Everything's done for a specific reason. Everything is going for a specific reason. So.
As one of our head reps, you see a lot of the head reps gathered around Robot over there. What do you think they're looking at right now? They're looking at if the rings are touching. They're looking at if there's anything contacting the robot, where the rings are in terms of if they're counted. Uh, is the base touching another fuel element? Is the, uh, is the platform balanced? Is a ring caught right on the edge touching the everything? Yeah, and so, and so, and so can you expl yeah, explain that again how that you know, ruling works with, with, when a robot's touching the rings or not? Like, what specifically, why is this such a critical decision for them? It's such a critical decision because right now it's coming down right to the last ring, last few two last ring. The way it works is if a robot's touching the rings, that ring is then not counted as scored. Mm -hmm. Any rings that are touching that ring is a transitive property, and those rings are not scored as well. And as you yeah. can see, sometimes the refs like to take it out visually to let you know it's not scored. Yeah, and in a game where every single point matters, every single ring matters, that's what we were just talking about with Andrew. I mean, it's so important that we get these decisions right and get you know the scores entered as correctly as possible. We got a great ref crew, so these guys are on spot. They... Are you allowed to say that about yourself and your own crew? Uh... <laughs> no, it really it's it's actually an incredible matchup, you know. And so in this, uh, which division were you on in your? I was on Innovate. You're on Innovate. Okay, yeah, the division that came out here just they came out ready to play. This match, you know, we got Pybotics and the Cheesy Poops. These are a couple of teams that are no strangers to competitive levels to play. Um, do you think this match went the way they intended? I know you kind of jokingly said earlier, but I mean... No, it's wow. honestly, it, uh, I'm sure they wanted to get, the, get on the platform. I'm sure they wanted to climb, uh, but things never go right in a Vex match. Uh, as you saw a few matches ago, one of the robots tipped. I'm sure they've never done that in one of their qualifications or limbs matches, but it's tough out here. It's the best teams in the Vex worlds. It is, and these and these teams are under so much pressure, and they're most of them are handling it very well. You know, you see these teams cool, calm, collected. You know, when they win, they're excited. When they don't win, you know, they take it and they learn a lot from it. Sure. Yeah. So, all right. Well, it's been fun talking to somebody with a much better beard than mine, but not quite as good of hair as mine. So, Tyler, I think we got scores ready. That's right, Grant. The scores are in, and that's 139 to 155, Blue Alliance. Semi-finals match number one, the Arch Division advances. George, who do we have on the NASA field? Well, here on the NASA field, we're getting...